Hi everybody, I'm Mike McCrory, and this little guy is... Leo. And Leo's actually not that little anymore, and that's one of the challenges of building a desk for him, because I want to build him a desk that's going to last him a lifetime. And if I was going to build one right now, it would probably be 24 inches high, but by the time he's in high school, he's going to want one that's 30 inches high. So, I, I decided to use a FlexiSpot Pro Plus Standing E7 desk frame. I've got an E5 in my office, and Leo loves it. Um, so we're going to build one for you, we're going to build it together, and this one's going to be even better because it's an E7. I've only got an E5, so you're going to be lucky. <laughs> Alright, so let's get started. Alright, so I'm going to, you're not that tall for this workbench, so I'm going to find another use for these clamping fixtures, and I'm going to get you to stand on them so you can see what's going on, okay? And I've got this really cool wood. It's called wormy maple. And look at it. See all these marks and all these holes? Those are worm holes mm -hmm. from worms that were in there. You like it? Yes. All right. But you're so, gonna have to like sand dust it because it's not that. Like, yeah, it's pretty smooth. rough, right? Yeah. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run it through the jointer mm -hmm. to get one side smooth, and we want the edges to be flat and, and straight. Because look here, when I pull this together. You see that big gap in the middle? Mm. What is touching at the end? That means it's not straight. So that's what the jointer is going to do, is it's going to make it straight. Yeah. So one of the problems is that my jointer is only 8 inches wide. So the widest piece of wood we can use is 8 inches. So can you measure that one for me and tell me how wide it is? So how much is that? Like 7 and... In... 7 and 15 sixteenths, right? Yeah. <laughs> A little bit less than 8. Uh, this other piece over here is too wide. It's 10 inches. Oh, that's big. So we're going to have to cut it down the middle. But what I'd like to do is to mark it so that we can keep track of which one was on the left-hand side and which is on the right-hand side. Yeah. So grab this Sharpie. On the left-hand side, write the number one, down, right on the end. Perfect. And then on the right-hand side, put the number two. Perfect. Oh, ugly. It's ugly, but that's not too bad. You're only seven. So this is a jointer, and the way that it works, if you look in here, it's got all these teeth in here. These are yeah. really sharp, and this spins around, and it cuts off the wood. And, so it's really, what, and it's really dangerous, so that's why it has a cover here. What happens if someone, like, puts their hand through that when it's they spinning? They would lose their hand forever. But what happens if it's not spinning? Would it still hurt them? If it's not spinning, no. They, you can like, touch it, but it's but very dangerous because... What happens if they're not spinning, but it's so fast that they were... Like, their hand was so fast. Oh, that would cut you. Yeah, so you have to be really careful, and that's why the cover is always on, even when it's off. And we never put our hands near the blade, the, near the teeth, and that's why we have these push blocks to protect us. Okay? This is used to move the this table up and down. So if I want to take off a lot of wood, I push it down. But this part over here always stays at the same level. If I want to take off a whole lot, I pull this out and it comes way down. And now look, it's going to take off a huge amount of wood. What happens, like, why is it the, not the same level? What happens if, it's like, I think it's when it's not the same level it wouldn't work. So why can it work like that? Well, if they were at the same level, it would take off almost no wood because they're at the same level. You want this to be lower, so when it comes in lower, it's going to take off that much. Yeah, okay. Makes sense? Yeah. Alright, so hearing protection on. I'm going to start by jointing the edges of these wider pieces and then we'll run them through the table saw. We ran the edges through the jointer, that's to get a nice straight edge. Yeah. Now we can take that straight edge and run along this. This is called a fence. I'm going to bring this over and I want to cut it wait, 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 approximately in the middle. 
Excuse me, Mike. Yes. You are not going to use a real fence to cut through something. I'm going to use the table saw to yes. cut through it, and the fence is going to guide it. Okay. okay. So but that's not a real life fence. That's not a real life fence, but they call it a fence. <laughs> so I got that set, so it's going to cut approximately in the middle. Okay. And then we can run the faces through the jointer because we want these, the top and the bottom, to be flat too. Okay, so we're going to run one side through the jointer, get it flat, straight, and then we'll run the other side through the planer. Okay? Okay. All right, put your protection on. Do I need hearing? You do need hearing protection. Where are they? <laughs> So now that the board is not so wide, it's going to fit on the jointer. But remember last time when I did the edges, I didn't have to use the push block because my hands were far away from the blade. Yes. But now... You have to use the push block. Yeah, because now the hand's going to be really close to the blade and it's too dangerous. Yes. All right? Because if you were not, it, if by accident you could cut your hand. That's and right. And nobody wants that to happen. That's right. Especially me. Okay. So, so you go down to the end and you can be my helper. <laughs> Okay, Leo. So look, we ran one side of each of these pieces. Are you tired? This is boring. Sure. <laughs> so we ran one side through the jointer so it's nice and flat. We can't run the other side through the jointer because if we did, we couldn't be sure that it's going to be the same thickness all the way across. So that's why we use a planer for the next step. The planer will make sure that this side will end up to be parallel to this side. What does parallel mean? Parallel means it's the same thickness all the way. It doesn't really mean that, but something like that. Okay, ready? And you've helped me with the planer before. So you, I'm going to feed it through here. Feed it? You're going to feed it gummy bears? It's like the planer's going to eat the wood. So I'm going to feed this through. You're and making you, me hungry, Daddy. And, and you can pull it through the other end, okay? Ready? Ooh, Now that this wood is all milled up, it looks really cool, yes. don't you think? Yeah, and it's like mostly the same color, not exactly. Yeah, not exactly, but that's nice. It's nice to have little variations. Um, so I think this is the nicest piece. We'll put that in the middle, that piece right there. Okay. Has lots of worms. Now it's interesting, these are the pieces that you numbered. This one is number one and this one's number two. And if we put them together, look. See that doesn't line up? And that's because of the amount of material that we cut from here. But if I push this up, look, now, now this lines up, see? And this piece right here lines up. So that's how we're gonna glue it up. But you can see there's still a little bit of a gap here. So we have to run it through the jointer one more time. Oh. And one of the tricks is, because the jointer might not be perfectly square, perfectly 90 degrees, so what we're going to do is we're run these through in the opposite way. And I'm going to mark this with an I. That means inside against the fence. I know you don't think it's a fence, but it's a fence on the jointer. And I'm going to put an O here, outside, inside, outside. Where's the edge? Inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside. Done. Okay? Thanks for the sound effects. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to run it through the jointer. You can go outside and play while I do that because I know this is boring. And then we're going to glue it up. Yeah! Okay.
Using this method to alternate the orientation relative to the fence will correct any error in the angle of the fence. So even if it was set at 60 degrees instead of 90 degrees, the error would be canceled out by the two supplementary angles. Before we glue it up, I think what we should do is get everything lined up. Don't put, don't put glue yet. <laughs> Look, see if I move this over like this? Then here, that's, that line, that line fits. This one is actually a different piece of wood. It was not attached to this, but if I put it right there, it looks like it's part of that same piece. I'm gonna draw a line <sighs> on here. I'll put one of the other in it. So then, we, then when we glue it up, we're just going to make sure that that line is all lined up. And that'll make it faster than us having to worry about it when we're clamping it. Do we have to do everything okay. tonight? So yeah, so now it's time for you to put the glue on. Yes! I want to do the box and the holes. Yeah, so go carefully. And just start right at this end. Can you reach that end? I'll slide the board for you. Not too much, just a little bit. A little bit more than that. Let me show you how much we need, and then you can follow my example. About that much, okay? Okay. So you start here, where I ended. There you go. Try to keep it in the middle. And off the front. <laughs> Have you been drinking? <laughs> what do you mean? It's too far, too far, too far, too far, too far! Alright. You have an easy job, you don't have to move at all. <laughs> I'm doing all the work here. Oh. Okay, good. So now take this brush. Oh. No, no, that's enough. That's enough. Take this brush and spread it all along the edge, ah. okay? And I'll do this end. This is coping. Ooh, I'm not going to be bored. There. All done. Oh, wait, ah, it's dropping. It's dripping? Yep, dripping. Okay. Well, we'll just pull that up with our finger. All right. Let's do the next piece. Yes, I love this. All right. Same thing. Mike, I want to do it. I yep. want to do it. I'm going to stop in the middle. Now it's your turn. Call my brush. Uh, portion, move the desk. Let's do this. Perfect. <laughs> Don't get it on your sleeve. Ugh. That was a Paper Leo so that it doesn't stick to the workbench. You help me to make sure that the line is lined up, okay? If you see me making a mistake, you let me know. Lined up. Okay. Oops. Not a little more this way, I think. Lined up, I think. Okay. I think. I hope. Up. Not lined up? Which way does it have to go? Left or right? This way. Is that left or right? Left. A little bit left. I don't see the real alignment. Okay, and this is the last piece. And now everything's lined up, right? But now we have to, because there's glue coming out, we have to. But the first thing we have brush, to do is. Brush, brush. The first thing we have to do is clamp it. Okay. How many clamps do you have? I got a lot. Why but, do you need that many? But I don't have enough. What do you mean you don't have enough? Nobody has enough clamps. Put 
short one here at the end. So that's 32 inches. That's pretty big for a desk. Okay, now what I want to do is take some more parchment paper and put it on top. And we're going to put some pieces of wood across it and clamp it this way, clamp it vertically to make sure that it's flat. See where the parchment paper is? Leo had to go to bed, so we filled all of the holes with total boat epoxy with black dye. We taped all of the holes on the bottom side so that the epoxy wouldn't leak out. And then tomorrow morning we will assemble the FlexiSpot E7 desk frame. All right, so the instructions are, it's almost like Lego, right? You just have to follow the instructions step by step. Lego takes less time. <laughs> okay, so the first thing is we have to put this on here. Just like that. You put the screw in the hole. Put the screw in the hole. Mike, where are the other parts? The other parts are on the other workbench. Okay, here, take this wrench and screw it in all the way. And now you can make it extra tight when you hold it horizontally like that. So now we've got to put this leg over here. It's a little bit heavy. You're not supposed to have the cable. Uh, no, that's okay. We can just leave it there. Now, uh, can you put the four screws in? To... Can you put these screws in? Oh, yes, sir. That is no problem at all. And use your wrench, and I'll put the other leg in while you're tightening that. Eight screws, serious? That's a lot of screws. Yeah, I can't do any more. Okay, that's tight enough. There. Good job. Okay, now we have to put the legs or the the feet on top. Don't tell me more screws. This is more screws, and it's starting to get a little bit tall. So you might have to climb up on top of the workbench to do this. Oh. Let me lift you up. Huh? Where? Next screw. Please, thank you. Next screw. Thank you. Next screw. Thank you. Right there. Okay, Leo, so now we have to plug, this. Is, these are the two motors, one motor in each leg. We have to plug those into this controller box. Can you see where they go? There we go. And this is the Control. controller, I guess that's what they call it. And that has to be plugged into two of those ports. More to the bottom, yes. Perfect. And then the other one goes over here. 
Like, do you think this will work? Let me plug it in and we'll test it, okay? All right, it's plugged in. Oh, let's see. Gosh, it's working. Whoa, Mike, this can go to four feet and 94 inches. 49.4, I think that's 49 inches. That's pretty high, cool. All right, let's do another test to see if it's strong enough to lift you up. Oh, I'm scared. All right, give it a try. I'm slipping. Okay. I would not let Leo do this unless the desk was super sturdy. <laughs> this is like a roller coaster. I like a roller coaster, yeah. That's pretty cool. All right, that's high enough, I think. I'm gonna fall. Yeah, you better come down. It's going to be so cool in your bedroom. And terrifying if I go on it. <laughs> Leo's on his way here to spend another weekend with us, so I'm going to sand off the excess epoxy before we run the desktop through the drum sander. Okay, Leo, so now we have to cut these ends off because they're all jagged. So I'm going to draw a line, and I don't want to go too close to the end because it's a little bit rough here. I'm going to draw a straight line, and we're going to cut along there. We'll cut that, and then we'll measure the length to get the other end cut. Now I'm going to put this straight edge right on the pencil line. Can you turn the vacuum on for me? We decided to cut the desk to be 80 inches long. So this is gonna be a pretty large desk. It's 80 inches by 32 inches deep. Okay, so now we have to sand the top of this, the top and the bottom, but it's really heavy. So your dad and I are gonna do that and you're gonna be the cameraman, okay? <laughs> This is a pretty slow process. It's important to sand off just a small amount with each pass and to make sure that the board remains horizontal without letting either end of the board rise up because that will cause the sander to make a depression in the wood whenever that happens. It's late at night and Leo's in bed again, so I'm going to sand the top to remove the scratch marks from the drum sander. Next, I'm going to use a jig that I made for my router to carve grooves for pencils and pens. I'm using a round nose bit with a quarter inch radius to make a groove that's a half inch wide. And I'll do the same at the other end of the desk.
Next, I'm gonna cut openings for the power strips and I'll put one in each end of the desk. Okay, so Leo, last night when you were sleeping, we put these pencil slots in and we cut these for the power strips. So the next thing we have to do is we want to cut a curve around the front so you can sit closer inside the desk and that way you can turn to your computer or whatever you have on your desk. All right, so we're going to just draw a curve here, but we have to get a, like a really perfect curve. You know how we're going to do that? How? We're going to use a piece of string. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this, turn this around. Watch out. Let me turn this around to the end. Oof. Take a piece of wood, and I'm going to clamp this on here. And then we want to find the middle of the desk. right here. You're watching? I'm going to transfer that middle point over to this piece of wood. I'm going to put a nail in here. And now I'm going to take this piece of string and I'm going Why to put it Why is string for? Well you watch what happens. Now if I take this string and attach it to the pencil Look, I get a nice curve, like that. See how it's a perfect curve now? I move the piece of wood closer, and now we'll look what happens to the curve. That's way too much. It comes in maybe too much, right? That's too much. Even though it starts and ends at the same point. So what that means is maybe we need to move the the board back and we'll try one more time. Okay, this time we move the board back away from the desktop and we'll draw one more curve. What the? So which one do you like the best? This one that's really deep or the one in the middle that we started with or this one? Right in the I, middle. I don't know, I kind of like this one. I kind of want the milk. Because then you'll have more room for your computer and your screen and your big Lego sets. Because if you had the Millennium Falcon, tiny, it's going to take up this whole space, right? We'll do the small one? Yeah. Okay. So this is a router and I've got it unplugged so that it's safe. This is a round over bed and we're going to use this to round over the edges so that it's really nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to plug it in. You stand over there, put your hearing protection on.
Keep the brush vertical like this. I can't do really vertical. I'm not a vertical thing. And if you hold it like this, with your, with your finger down here, that'll help you to keep it stable. Mm. We will apply a coat of Danish oil to the bottom of the desktop before attaching the desk frame. And then we'll flip it over and apply a couple of coats to the top. Okay, so now we gotta screw the frame onto the bottom of the desktop, okay? I wanna do it. Put one there. I wanna do it. You can do the other side. Okay, you come and do these two over here. <laughs> Put in there. There you go. Oh, you hold it. Put your hands off. Okay, I'm trying to, but you don't have it. You gotta push down. Okay. okay. There you go. Good job. Ooh, what happened? It's not a good idea to push with the brush like that. You just, just pull with it. Okay, I'll give you a little bit more here. Just spread that around. This finish goes on really easily. You simply flood it on, let it soak in for about 15 minutes, and then wipe it off with a clean rag or a paper towel. I've drilled small holes for the screws, but I'm also using a gimlet to pre-thread the holes so that the screw heads don't snap off. Now I just need to drive up to Leo's house and deliver the desk. Mike, let's use this desk and lift you up. I hope it can. They say it can lift 350 pounds. Give it a try. You could probably lift two of me. Wow, Mike, this desk is amazing. It could <laughs> last me a lifetime. <laughs> nice, I don't think I could have done it without your help. So thank you, Leo. Hello, I'm Mike McCurry and this is Leo. And this is called Would You Make It? So if I made, so I'm going to make a desk for Leo, but if I made him a desk like that was 24 inches, when he's in high school, he would ask for a 30 inches desk. So I was, I am going to make a desk that can go up and down. So, and my, and Leo will help me. And also, it's going to last him a lifetime. So I'm going to make him a lifetime desk for it can last him a lifetime. Cut. Cut. The FlexiSpot E7 desk frame is powerful enough to lift up more than 350 pounds. It goes up and down really smoothly. You know that the stand is sturdy just by the fact that it weighs about 70 pounds without the top. FlexiSpot offers a 15-year warranty and a 30-day return window. I've put a link in the description in case you want to check it out. So I gotta ask, would you make it?